Look at somebody and say, I am unstoppable. Whatever you thought you lost, whatever is taken from you, God will compensate you. All things work together for good to those who are called according to his what? Purpose. All things. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. The meaning of Amalek, where is taking note of this? A people that lick up, they lick up anything that's around them. Or total devourer is the meaning of Amalek. Total devourer. One who consumes whatever stands in his path. Total devourer. The one that lick up anything around him. That is the meaning of Amalek. Now, friends, in the scriptures, if you are a Bible student, go through the word Amalek or Amalekite. You will find that every mention, almost 90% mention of Amalek and Amalekite were for either war, bloodshed, and wickedness. Every mention of Amalek. When the Hebrews left the land of bondage, on their way to Canaan, the first nation that did not pity them, that dared to confront them and fought them was Amalek. After such victory over Pharaoh and his land, after 430 years of suffering, they came out. Amalek confronted them and fought them. And, and this battle was, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to, to take note of something. This battle was a fierce battle. That fighting Amalek had to take a new dimension. And the dimension it took was a prophetic act and prophetic tokens. In other words, if there was no prophetic action and tokens, Amalek would have won. That tells you this spirit I'm dealing with. Moses had to sit on a stone and lifted up his hand with his rod. And one wonder how can you how long can you hold a hand? Now, this the rod was a prophetic token. The hand that sitting on the stone was a prophetic action. That means when you are going to deal with this spirit, you got to be more spiritual than the ordinary believer. That's why it's a strong man. It's a strong horn. And Moses' hand, when the hand goes down, Amalek will begin to pursue the Hebrews. Remember, they, didn't, they don't know war. They have not. They are just coming out of slavery. There is a spirit you are going to deal with this morning. Are you ready for me? Then Aaron and Hor held Moses' hand. They too, they were weak, so they took stones and held Moses' hand. This was the war that Joshua had to suspend the solar system and say, sun remain there and moon remain there. Don't come. No night, no, no night. They remain. When the moon supposed to come, the moon remain one place. And the Bible said, no man has commanded the solar system since then. After then, 
and before them. That means this was a stronghold to deal with. It took such prophetic declaration, prophetic action, and prophetic token to win the war with Amalek. Somebody say, I hear. When the war was over, God said to Moses, write it as a memorial. I just wonder whether we, we understand this. He said, write it as a memorial. I will eliminate Amalek. And Moses came and said, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Ladies and gentlemen, it means trace to go and read your Bible. The Israel fought Amalek from that period until all through the Bible days. Now, I'm not dealing with the tribe Amalek. I'm dealing with the spirit that has the characteristics of the Amalekites. That's what I'm dealing with. There is a spirit that has the characteristics of the Amalekites. If you are a Bible student, I would like for you to look into the scriptures. If you read Judges chapter 6, verse 3, Judges chapter 6, verse 3, and so it was, when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them, verse 4, and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor us nor us. Every hidden destiny helper be made visible in the name of Jesus. I've come to announce to somebody that the season of celebration has just started. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. This week, this week is your week of testimony. Unlimited testimony. Somebody shout and receive it. Are you here? Did you see Amalek there? Did you see Amalekites there? One of the reasons the Israel were impoverished was they, when they are sowing, no enemy. When it is time for harvest, that's when the enemy shows up. And Amalekites were involved. They destroyed the increase. It's a spirit that attacks your increase. And leave no sustenance, anything to keep you. I'm going to prove this to you. Leave no sustenance. This spirit. If you check 1 Samuel chapter 30, you will see the Amalekites again. <laughs> Before you go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, don't forget, in chapter 15, it was the Amalekites that God told Saul and said, Saul, I'm sending you, I remember what Amalek did to the Hebrews. This was after some hundreds of years. God said, I remember. Hear my prophecy. Whatever spirit that represents Amalek in your life, 
May the Lord remember to send tribulation to them from this morning. He said, I remember what Amalek did. Then he says, Saul, this was the first king of Israel. Israel had gone through a lot. The judges have ruled and they couldn't eliminate Amalekites. And God said, you know what, Saul? Your assignment. Get Amalekites destroyed. I remember. I hope you know that was what ruined Saul. Yes, sir. <laughs> that was what ruined his dynasty. Ruined his kingship. Saul went, slaughtered the Amalekites, but spared the king of Amalek. And spared, God said destroy. I don't want anything to do with Amalek. Lift up your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. Whatever represents the spirit of Amalek in my life. The blood is against you. Ladies and gentlemen, he spared the good sheep. And he said he wanted to offer it as a sacrifice. God said to Samuel, get up. He said, go, 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 go for me. Go and tell Saul. I regret I made him a king. Ah! So he said, what did I do? I, I slaughtered the Amalekite. God said, Really? What of the king? What of this bleeding of the, of the sheep I'm here? I told you, there is something that is in my heart. My people came out. Amalek attacked them. And I promise I will eliminate them. And nobody has dealt with them. So Saul, I sent you. When Samuel finished delivering the message, Saul said, I repent. As Samuel was going, he held Samuel's cloth. The cloth turned into two. The prophet turned around and said, the kingdom is taken from you and given to someone. And guess who it was given to? A boy of 17 years old. What was the problem? Amalek. The spirit of Amalek can reduce a man to nothing. And bring you to the floor. In 4 Samuel chapter 30, that's Amalekite again. They invaded Ziklag, where David was. They invaded the place. Now, the name Amalek means lick up. Total devourer. The Bible said they carried everyone, female, little children, and they burnt Ziklag with fire. Not one thing was left. That is a true picture of this kind of spirit. Please follow me. When David and the 600 men arrived back to Ziklag after three days, they discovered that nothing was left. Nothing. I'm going to show you the characteristics very quickly of this because of my time. The characteristics of Amalek. Number one, a stronghold, Amalekite spirit. And the Amalekite spirit is a very strong hold. A strong man. It is that wicked altar in your background that fights you remotely. That confronts you from behind. Amalekite spirit is an unrepentant enemy. A foundational enemy. It is a household enemy who studies your activities and capitalizes on your ignorance to finish you. That's the characteristics. A stronghold. He 
studies you. And come from behind. The power of the altar is your ignorance.